All right, we're doing it. I didn't really want to, but I have wanted to make a video about the polls. And that's first going to involve talking about what's on screen here. Uh, but before that, what's up, guys? Welcome back to another video. Uh, obviously, this one's hopefully on face value is going to be completely different than my normal stuff. This is probably going to be more akin to when I talked about the new skill way back when. Uh, one of my most controversial, but also one of the biggest videos that drew a lot of um, feedback overall, both positive and negative to the game and to me. But looking forward to hopefully stirring some additional conversation about this situation as well. Um, so this will be a bit more off the cuff. I do have some notes that are going to be more scripted and guided, but some of the things I'm going to leave for filling in the gaps with, with some of my open thoughts. So bear with me as this isn't going to feel as produced, but hopefully the content is actually deeper than some of the other stuff I've provided. So I watched the uh, Rathma Q&A today. And I had already been thinking about making a video due to the fallout from the polls. And we're going to talk about all of this here in a second. But I'm going to start and just give a bit of a disclaimer that I know Kieran and Aiza are really good dudes. I'm huge fans of them. And I want to make clear that any of my criticisms in this video are not aimed at them as people or individuals. But what I'm going to see the criticism as, and which I'm going to encourage you all to think about this as, as Jagex at the core, as a team, as uh, they're thinking about the game and about the administration of the game, and then the decision making that's going on there, or at least as it appears to me to be. I'm going to do my best to be super fair, uh, and I'm going to point out things that I think that they did well, and at least provide some information or where you can find this information for those that want to dig a little bit deeper. Uh, and I will start and just shout out and I'll probably shut this out multiple times, but go watch the Q and a yourself. It's only an hour and 15 minutes. If you love the game, be informed about it, especially in how they're handling this situation. And it might provide a little bit more context than I'm able to give about the things that I say in this video. I'm also going to, you know, self divulge and admit that I am probably a classic no voter overall. You know, for those of you that watched my previous video criticizing the new skill, you know that I was pretty resistant to it just by the basis of changing the game risked us losing the game, at least historically speaking in RuneScape terms. I'm relatively resistant to new content. I think especially lately, a lot of the content has felt relatively hollow. Uh, some of it felt forced and it's been really at the cost of what I see as end game content for mid game content, which is not where I think the, the long term health of the game is going to be. That being aside, that's my bias. Uh, but I do think things like balancing QOL, I, I generally support that those are all good. And I just want to I want to acknowledge the bias in this conversation so that I have a specific tint, but I do think that the conversation in the community should be had and I'm going to provide a little bit of expertise on measurement and polling, because obviously in, in psychology, that's, that's where some of my expertise lies. Uh, but I also want to point out I'm not inherently against polling or against updates. In fact, I would probably vote yes for a lot of the updates that I vote no to if they were presented in different ways or if they were polled in a different way. Uh, some of it is more of a resistance to change too, I guess. But it simply comes down to the flaws in the system and that's what I'm going to try to yap about mostly today. The Rathma example is a peek into the community that would have made the old Reddit drama calendars, I think. But it's a really great opportunity to push this conversation around polling forward. So I'm going to first discuss a little bit about my thoughts around the Rathma update and then the polling results and then specifically their response to those results and how they're handling that, which is both really good and really bad in my opinion. But more importantly, the second half of this video is going to discuss the poll system in general and then point out some things that I see as problems and try to offer some solutions or things for Jagex to consider on how to improve the way with which they measure the community fundamentally through the polls. Okay, so in that Q&A, there was, uh, I think, 
obviously their their intention was to respond to the backlash and to the feedback that they received. And one of the biggest criticisms is like, why the hell are you guys repolling this? So I'm going to walk through some of the points that they made. It won't be in specific order that the Q&A answered. I clustered some of the ideas that I wanted to talk about together. But all of this is coming almost, I did my best to quote it directly, but the content is coming from the Q&A primarily and from some of the responses I saw on Reddit from the mods and Twitter. But obviously they talked about, uh, and, and I'm giving kudos to Kieran here and well, it's obviously to the team here, but they talked that time gating absolutely has no place in old school in general. And they knew that this was a risk going into polling Rathma. They said something we actively avoid every time that they do this, but if they knew this was a risk, why didn't they do that check in the first place? Why didn't they put it out as a blog post before pulling it so they could get this feedback? And I will say later in the video, they did go on to talk about that. So, so kudos, but that's such a huge oversight that seems so apparent. If they knew it was a risk to add a, a mechanic that's completely foreign to the game, why do it in such a big event? They talked again about the, the importance of the big event too. So kudos there, but... They compared the time gating of Rathma to farming, which I think is a fundamental attribution error in that farming is a completely individual account based time gate, if you want to call it that. But Rathma created FOMO as they, they try to put it, but Rathma involves other people and it would confer a competitive loss if you're not competing with others on the same time gate. People that kill 10 Rathma and you've only killed one, have much more benefit than you, for example. And this is much more of a problem even in things like World of Warcraft, where if you fall behind in like raid lockouts weekly, you're going to be much less geared either as a player or maybe as a guild than the, than the guild or the players that can clear every single week, uh, whereas, whereas you can't. This, this is one of the problems with time gating in other MMOs. One of the other points they said is that with Rathmaw, their hope was to bring PVPers together to fight one another through a spike in the traffic, which is absolutely an error because PVPers and PVMers are completely different for the most part. I think there's probably a very small portion of the population that actually overlaps there. This is a PVM content. There's no reason to suspect that other PVPers are going to be there in droves other than to hunt the PVMers and create the loot pinatas, which they so adamantly denied was the intention it, they called it a byproduct but that's a byproduct that you know is going to occur is intentionally done is in my opinion they did talk about increasing the frequency of the spawns reducing the fomo because of this and changing the time gating this uh, by not having it so limited which fair enough good good changes we'll talk about that in a bit but they also talked about the element of being forced to go to the wilderness this is this is one thing with PVM, and I think it's going to be continually a problem with trying to add things to the, to the wildies. If you're going to add something with a potential unique that has such a, a wide-ranging impact, take the Void Waker, for example, you are forcing players to go in. And although you say it's PVM is, uh, PVP is optional, if you have to go to the wilderness to get something that is considered utility or BIS potentially, it is no longer optional in theory. And it, actually, not in theory, in practice, it's no longer optional. They, are, they said they're also considering a non-wilderness version, and I think that's obviously a great balance. Uh, how they do that, they said there's going to be a, uh, a blog coming sharing all of these ideas. It's going to be... We'll see. We'll see. I, I feel like anything they do, if, if it's equivalent, uh, Rathma is just going to be dead on arrival. One thing they did say was that it should have been unequivocally clear that you can't avoid PvP with this update. They said it's inspired by the breaches of Deadman, and they were looking at what worked in Deadman because they would see a whole bunch of people log in for each of the breaches, but I don't think that they were fully thinking about this deeply enough because they failed to consider that Deadman is a limited time event, and most people are taking time off or are dedicating more playtime than average than the main game, and that's because the main game is an entirely different ecosystem and it's not constrained. You don't have those opportunities to take vacations for Rathma in this case. And that's, you know, the main game is ultimately not dead men. It's an entirely different experience. And we shouldn't be basing updates in the main game, in my opinion, off of 
time locked events where you can do fun events. And that's the thing too, is the breaches in that they don't matter. You know, and, and I mean, nothing in this game matters fundamentally. It's a video game. But in, in terms of the health of the game, Dead Man's over after a week or two. Missing out on Rathma could have, again, those long-term reaching impacts. And I'm sure, again, I'm being a little bit hyperbole here, but I'm trying to draw out those logical conclusions that you have to go to worst-case scenarios when you're considering this because it's clear that Jagex isn't thinking this deeply. They're just saying what would be cool. And I, you know, this looks sick this boss is cool the idea of a world boss that pops around the wilderness at different locations that is cool the time gating atrocious some of their their ideas around pvp net being necessary also atrocious there's lots of ways that they can implement some of these ideas and i hope this character model because it looks so sick but let's keep going let's keep going again i want to give i've been dogging on them here for a couple minutes now i'm going to give them more more credit they said, admittedly, that these were not refined ideas, that they heard the criticism, and I do, I do see it in what they've presented, um, and that, in theory, they're not coming back with the same pitch in trying to present this and potentially re-polling it. And they are trying to make what they call drastic changes. Uh, oh, one of the other points, and I did kind of mention this, but Aiza did say the summit was not a good place for Rathma to be presented. And I, I'm going to say that's a goaded response. That's absolutely true. And hopefully that's a, a learning lesson for any future summits that they don't present something so potentially controversial because they probably got worse backlash being part of the summit than it would have if it just gotten polled. Um, maybe 10%, I would say. I, I bet this would have still failed if it were just polled outside of it, but I bet it was much worse received because of that. More eyes. Okay, so then they went on to answer a question about why do you think that Rathma failed? They said they know there's problems with the design, legit issues, and, and it's not just that it was a PvP update. They know equivocally from past PvP updates that we vote yes to some of them. So it was something unique about Rathma. And obviously it's the time gating, the FOMO, we've talked about that. There was concerns around clans and lockdowns because of how few spawns and being in multi and things like that. Uh, they were... There was worries about the length of time it would take to get all the rewards, about being forced in the wilderness and being compelled to go because of those up, you know, what I talked about earlier, the, the items. They also talked about uh, proposed rewards, making it easier to kill, uh, kill you as PKers get them. I don't see that as a big issue. Frankly, that's just going to be part of the game as power creep occurs anyways. But it's, it's one of the things they heard. Uh, they also talked about PvP and PvM not really mixing and that it's not just an issue for Rathma, but it is seen in other PvM content in the Wildy. They additionally talked about possible exceptions of not adding items from Rathma to the, cl the clog. Um, they said it sounds kind of weird not to do this. I personally think that the clog is fine. It doesn't really have any wide-reaching consequences. If you're a completionist, you should have to complete the game in that way. This would be part of the game if it passed. I do see, though, things like combat achievements, although I know there's some for others in the wildy, but combat achievements are different because they confer a game advantaging awards such as like longer thralls, potentially. And they did say that it's probably fine to exclude combat achievements. One of the things, so sorry, I, I meant to be flipping through here. Uh, here's the poll results. 49% yes. This is one of the worst in history, they said. And then here was one of my favorite responses I saw uh, from the cold one, or a cold one, the goat. Uh, no pet, no clogs, perfect. I would add no CAs. Uh, increase frequency spawn. Make rewards not work in PVM. That would be a good one, potentially, if it is supposed to be a PVP update. But then you're not going to get that spike in population from the PVMers that don't PVP. Yeah, he talks about it would probably have a better chance of passing. That is probably true. The thing that I'm going to talk about and that I, I don't disagree with it potentially passing in the future with good changes as a different poll, but it's a, about whether or not we should be polling it again. And we're going to talk about that. Before I talk about that, I just have two more final points about Rathma itself. If Rathma does come in, or if it's forced in in some way, what is going on with Manked having the RSN already and having apparently taken it days before the summit? That is a massive conflict of interest for anyone on the Jagex team to be potentially taking advantage of something like that. 
that RSN could go for billions after that. Whereas before, it's yeah, it's kind of a cool name, but it wouldn't have been huge because it's part of the game. This needs to either be considered internally about what can or cannot happen around that in the future. Arguably, Mank should not be allowed to have that RSN as knowing it was coming. It's not just about the name, though, but it's about the principle around with which they're operating in these updates. And then in terms of what I think Rathma could do if it were added, I think that they could consider adding no uniques around like items, but maybe they could add possible cosmetics. People love cosmetics. Don't don't undervalue cosmetics. And, and frankly, the cosmetics in the game are some of the things that people grind most for. Dusts, hard mode top items, bounty hunter items, those sorts of things. I do agree, maybe no clog, no CAs, and I do think no pet is a big one. Because if you if you have a time-gated pet in a different way than other bosses, I mean, it totally changes the nature of pets. And I know there's been some good conversation around pets having sh maybe should have been more uh, more common or even more rare. I think that was on a Sebe cast, but yeah. How they could still make this interesting is if it's going to be a more infrequent boss, just have it be really good gold per hour. That's still going to bring a lot of people out farming gold. Look what happened at revs. People farm revs still. I do think, though, there is one danger that if they make this update and it is mostly a gold thing, if it becomes dead content, it's going to cause some sort of economic fallout because clans will just control it. And that's a whole other issue. I don't really care about that fundamentally, though. If if the if it comes in, hopefully it's good. Hopefully it's not this this type of time gating. But OK, let's talk about what I see as the bigger problem. What the fuck is going on with the polls? As bluntly as I can say. We're in an age where everything is passing, whether it be due to the drop in the threshold of yes votes required for an update to pass. I do think that was an issue. It's kind of too, too far gone right now. Maybe we could talk about it in a future video. Might be due to a community composition or mindset that's shifted within the community being more trusting of Jagex. Although I don't think that that's actually what would bear out. I think it's more about the way that they're polling potentially and maybe some inflation of people that aren't actually that concerned with the the core essence of the game, which again, that's, that's some of my bias. But I do see there being some sort of weird feeling, whether you like them or not, around how the polls and the updates have been handled lately. And that has been continually building in the community probably for the last few years, frankly. So let's start with a little bit of the fallout from Rathma and how they handled it around the polling specifically. So this isn't so much about the update anymore, but the polling of it. One of the things the community has been saying, and if you watch that chat on the, the Q&A stream, you'll see a bunch of no means no. And, and Iza addressed this point, but I'm going to apply some pretty heavy criticism here. So I think that when he said no means no and then responded with other things, he was deflecting to not just putting out the same design, saying it's going to have a lot of changes. And while that can be true for an update, the idea of no in a poll is now in question. If no doesn't actually mean no, the poll system is not operating as it was intended to be operating or as it has been presented to be operating up until this point. They said they are going to check by putting out a blog post and seeing if this does warrant repolling based on community response. However, I'm a little skeptical on if they're actually going to do that for various reasons or how they're even gauging that in a meaningful fashion. Because looking at Reddit comments is a bunch of shit. I know it's the best we have, but that's not a very good objective way to actually go about measuring the community or, or checking the temperature. He also, when he was deflecting the no means no, he was also saying, let's actually talk about the things that we can give feedback on, which on the surface sounds like a reasonable response. But the thing is, is that is now dismissing what I just presented earlier, that the no in a poll actually functions as a no in the poll. We need to be able to trust that if we as a community don't want something to come into the game, that we're going to be able to prevent Jagex from doing it, as was intention uh, originally intentioned with Old School RuneScape. He also mentioned that he felt there's some sort of sentiment of the no vote representing no as in the current design was bad rather than no as this concept in general is bad. So an absolute versus a functional or relative no. I'm not actually sure that this is genuinely the case. 
And it could be, and I don't blame Aiza for this. He's probably not doing this thing intentionally. I, I think, again, it's more of a systematic way of how they're thinking about these things. But it could be that Jagex is gaslighting us into thinking that we actually want this or that we're saying no only because the current design was bad. And again, it's not so much about Rathmall. Because again, I would be open to Rathmall. It's about how they're going about this and that it's leaving room for us not to know how these polls are actually meant to function and how they're actually being utilized. Because right now, on the surface, and this no means no sentiment is coming from probably a feeling that we are being ignored largely as a community. Or maybe I'm being hyperbolic and I am being intentionally hyperbolic. But bear with me, bear with me. I've, I've still got more. One of the things that they talked about was why they were moving forward instead of scrapping this based on the poll results. One of the things that we as a community were supposed to believe is that polling lets us tell them what we do and don't want. And when the content fails, that it wouldn't be added to the game. And they had some of that sentiment in the Q&A. But then they also talked about unless it is repolled. Because at that point then, it's like, do I thought we just said we don't want this. And in the future, maybe this if this happened with an update that would have been catastrophic for the game, I don't think that's Rathma, but if it did, they could present any number of different reasons right now for why they're repolling. And it's devaluing our ability to even interact with this system in a meaningful way. We can only say yes effectively in a meaningful way. They also talked about, are there enough significant changes that we can make to this idea to warrant an entirely new design to be presented uh, with that similar shared concept, but so that all of that key feedback, the time gating and so much, uh, was integrated. And I think that that's actually an appropriate way to think about repolling. The thing is, though, is the standard for repolling has been fucking atrocious. You know, we look back at like the Divine Spirit Shield, uh, the arguments around sh sailing versus shamanism and now Rathmall. There's no consistency. There hasn't been transparency. There isn't really any clear reason why things have or have not been repolled, at least not not regularly they have given reasons but were they actually justifiable i'm not so sure and and some of this is where i'm going to get to around standardization of this but it feels as though jagex has been up to this point selectively choosing updates with which they have no clear procedures to really do this around to repoll or otherwise or to even potentially force through who knows what's actually going on i guess but frankly i think that this is the same sensation that people have been getting when they say that sailing's being forced in is that there isn't a clear reason that they didn't repoll sailing and shamanism maybe it was an oversight and they didn't want to admit that that's that would be fine if they just said oh we didn't even think about that sorry the people that were complaining about sailing versus shamanism may have been okay with that i mean i'm sure everybody would still cry i mean i'm making a probably 30 minute video yapping about this myself but the thing is is when jagex continues to do this trust in the community is going to erode and the lack of standardization is just going to leave us open to questioning what is actually happening here why are they doing this to me what it feels like is though the polling system is no longer working as it was originally intended to do. And that's, I would say, probably objectively true. They've changed it several times. Some of the changes were good, but it feels to me as though the polls are not asking us what we truly want in the game as much as it's asking us if we are okay with what the team thinks that we want or maybe even what Jagex themselves wants. Which, you know, critically speaking, I think that They've continued to fail time and again on some key features to actually figure out what the community wanted, which I see we typically want more leagues, more end game content, and maybe less annoyance scapes so and more QLL updates. It's probably a bit of my bias, but this failure stems not from them intentionally doing this. I think I'm going to ascribe them to being in good intention with the game. They have shown that, but it's it's more about them having poor systematicity. So let's talk a little bit about psychometrics, okay? So psychometric properties come from my domain in, in psychology and specifically more clinical psychology, I would say often, at least in the way that I'll talk about some of my examples. The main psychometric properties are things like reliability, validity, and then norming or sometimes standardization as it's referred to. That 
some of those, the, the reliability and the norming is when you do repeated measures or potentially measures that you compare others towards. The one that we're going to focus on, though, is validity. So validity is all about are we measuring what we actually want to or what we think we're measuring? A lot of times people have produced scales, whether they be psychological or otherwise, where they think that they are measuring something, but they're not actually measuring the construct with which they believe to be measuring. This has happened in some polls previously. I'm not going to dive into that today. Maybe I can do it in the future. But that is one of the things that I want you guys to think about is, are we actually getting a measure of if we do or don't want an update based on the polling system currently? And I'll, I'll argue in a bit, like the no vote for Rathma might not have actually been measuring that we didn't want the update. And Je uh, Aiza may have been correct with his assumptions. But from the poll results themselves, we can't make the conclusions that Jagat seems to be making. And that's because... With a simple yes or no vote, what you get is ultimately a dichotomous variable. So a variable with two outcomes. Dichotomous variables are very low resolution, statistically speaking. And a yes or no vote on the surface might seem good at determining if an absolute update should occur or not. But to what degree of precision, we can't actually know. Especially when Jagex isn't considering the uh, measurement error in these types of polls and obviously that's a little bit more advanced than I think their polling system is intended to be but ultimately when when these things are determining things that are, are affecting the health of the game you you do want to consider them uh, so let me give you an example from from the realm of psychology here so let me let me say I ask someone are you depressed today and they can only say yes or no so they could say yes or no but that doesn't actually tell me if they're actually clinically depressed Maybe that question isn't answering that. Maybe it's getting at them having a bad day when I ask it. Um, or if it did mean they were depressed, let's assume it did, it wouldn't tell me how severely. It wouldn't let me determine this person is more depressed than this person. This person wants an update more than that person. And now I get that this is a different kind of question on the depression front than an update, but the mechanics of the measurements and the way with which we ask questions remain the same. So I'm simply just using it as an example to, to make it easier to follow here. One of the solutions that we could add here, and that I know they've added in previous polls, but they might want to start to consider how to integrate this more systematically, is adding an additional metric, maybe something what we would call in psychology a Likert scale. So a scale that has more items than two, typically comes in four, five, or seven items. Um, could have more, but one example, a common scale that comes from Likert's is something like strongly agree to strongly disagree. And then in between that, you would have agree, slightly agree, neutral, uh, slightly disagree, disagree, strongly agree. This could provide additional valuable information that could be used to make other decisions or to infer conclusions about the results of polls in the absence of actual data like Again, I'm going to pick on Aiza here, but when he said that he thinks that the no is more about the, the way with which Rathma was proposed, he actually can't make that conclusion simply from the poll itself. And inferring from other sources is not actually accurately representing the poll results, but that could leave room for bias. And I'll talk a little bit more about that. But, uh, some other options here, we could also try like rank ordering the importance of updates. Uh, so let's say you, you vote yes to a bunch of items. Then you could say, I want this one the most. I think it's more important than the others. So if some of those other ones don't go through, that would be okay with that. So let's say everyone ranked one of the items as like the last in the, the rank order. Maybe that update's actually not that important or not that good, and it could be thrown out or re retooled to be more exciting. Uh, another option could be just an absolute rating system, something like a 0 to a 10 or some arbitrary number, five, seven are, are also good based on, on some principles of measurement I won't get into. But this then would give us an absolute zero where if you vote zero on something, that means you don't want it, absolutely not. And then this could allow us to gauge interest or excitement about an update through a value that you could average out. I recognize too that like a poll like this could end up being severely bimodally distributed. So you get a lot of answers up at like 9 and 10, and then probably a lot of answers at 0 and 1. But we actually don't know how it would look. Uh, you know, statistically speaking, most things would have a bell curve distribution. I, it's probably going to be skewed in this type of situation, but it could still be helpful. And there's ways you can correct for skewedness 
again, I doubt JX wants to go this in depth, but the fact that they're not even considering this shows that the polls aren't that clean. I've left Bath Mall up here. I'm gonna I'm gonna go to this. The, I I pulled this up this up as a meme too, just as an aside, real quick. Because I again I love polling. I would absolutely love if they improved the system and that we felt we could have confidence in it, which I currently don't. And maybe that's a me thing. You let me know if it does. Okay. Let's assume that we had some of this data I just suggested for Rathmaw. Maybe we could actually have seen that a very low value ascribed in terms of how much someone would enjoy this, or maybe there was a ton of strongly disagree. Then maybe we could draw a conclusion that, oh, people really don't want this update. Or let's say the Rathma update averaged something like a four out of a 10 or a five, or maybe it was somewhere in like the slightly disagree, neutral disagree side of things rather than strongly. This now gives you extra information to be able to say, oh, the community doesn't want this as a yes or no, but there seems to be some warmth here versus coldness. From that, then you can make additional decisions and you could also systematize how you're setting thresholds for repolling or justifications for it at the very least. Again, having more data is always a good thing. Given we only have a dichotomous yes or no, and one of the most conclusive polls in old school history, all we can determine is that the community did not want this update. And yet, it seems that Jagat's is intent on still spending more time on it. And again, it's not about the specific update for me. It's about the principle. Aiza's assumption that the no's were more about the design rather than the absolute concept, again, could be completely erroneous as I've been trying to present. We just don't have that data. Reading things or inferring it from Reddit again are separate sources. They're not going to be anything more than correlational at best. And that's hard for us to say if we're just reading it as humans. If they were maybe using AI to pull these comments, you know, then you could run statistics on it. But they're not, they're definitely not doing that. And frankly, they shouldn't do that because it leaves it open to bots on Reddit. But it can also leave too much room for Jagex to be effectively authoritarian with the game. And this is why I had the democracy meme here. But they could start to make their decisions based on selectivity or confirmation biases that they have about the ideas or the feedback that they think that they're getting from form posts and that they think should then be in the game or that they think we want in the game. Or even worse, it could leave room for abuse by bad actors looking to suck old school dry from the corporate side of the company somehow. And I think that's a fear all too pronounced in the community. So my idea is here, and, and this next little piece is all about, again, increasing the confidence, increasing the consistency and the effectiveness of the polling and reducing room for bad actors, bad decision making on Jagex's part and giving the community more power. The second point I want to make about polling here is that the no means no versus actually it means maybe thing should become more standardized as I've alluded to already. One way they could do this is setting up what we call in measurement cutoff scores. If one of the most devastating no results in history is not warranting of being completely shut down, what would be? And this goes back to my point of how do we know that we could actually vote out something that would be truly against the community? Right now, we don't know that because we don't know how Jagex is making their decisions. But they could set something as like, if it was only 25% yes, that would warrant absolute not repolling. Probably would never happen given the community, but maybe 40%. Maybe Rathma could have been a little bit worse and that would have been enough of an indicator for them. Um, but what percentage range could warrant repolling? That's another question you could ask. Maybe if something fails by 1%, like 69%, nice. That might warrant repolling. And this is where this idea, this threshold of arbitrariness, that's where that sentiment of why didn't they repull shamanism versus sailing comes from. It's because we don't know why they're making these decisions fundamentally. Now, there are ways that they could statistically determine this and they could implement the, the principle of error in their measurement that could tell them like, oh, the 69% was due to error. Oh, this low vote was also due to error. Or this high vote, something that passed was due to error, right? But I don't think that they have the experts to be able to do this. 
uh, and they probably don't want to put that much effort into it, nor do I think they actually should. But at the very least, they should try to set some sort of standard rules or policies that they follow. And they can do this in accordance with the community and with partners from the community or maybe with polls so that the community knows why the decisions are being made and that it doesn't seem so goddamn arbitrary and whimsical based on whoever's in charge of the decision making around specific projects. Because that's what it feels like as someone who's a little bit cynical here. Let me know what you guys think. I I've been yapping here. I know that. Um, and I'm almost done. I'm almost done. I promise. These are just some ideas I wanted to get out. But let's let's think of removing any possible abuse by bad actors within the company or otherwise should be paramount, as well as, you know, keeping the confidence from the community and giving the community as much power as possible in the direction of the game. Those should be the principles that I think the polling is trying to embody. However, things like the Manx situation might leave people that are more conspiratorial minded seeing this as well, if he could be making billions of GP or disrupting the game in some way that, that favors him just because he had insider information, how do we know that he's not, or somebody else that has some similar power in a future update, is not pulling the strings to get the repolling without these standards in place? I personally think that a conflict of interest definitionally is in the place with him having had that RSN. Again, again it's just a name. I don't, I don't care about pixels at the end of the day, but health of the game, bigger picture here. I'm trying to I'm trying to take it deeper. But I and I also don't think that Manx's pulling any puppet strings. I think he's just like, "Oh, this is cool. I'd like that name. It is cool." I think he's a PVPer, right? I I don't fault him. This is an error at the Jagex level and an error in the way that they make decisions and the way that they go through this type of process. And something that I hope that they can learn from in the future and continue to improve on. I do want to give the team a lot of credit as my final point here. You know, they have improved across time. I've felt heard. I think the community at, at, at as, as a whole has felt heard. But they have also shown that they have been resistant to learning some lessons and have been continually still reckless in other areas of their decision making. And anything that they can do to further their consistency, transparency, and coherence of the polling is only going to benefit the community, reduce any backlash that they get in the future, and lead us to having a better, healthier game with sicker updates driven by the community and what we actually want out here. Okay. I don't know how long this video is going to be. I don't see my timer. If you made it this far... Put some mean yapping criticism, like a, a troll to me in the comments. But also, let me know what your thoughts are around Rathmaw, around the polls. Um, criticize my opinions. I want to hear contra uh, contravening ideas. If you have other ideas around what Jagex could do to improve the polls, maybe you even think getting rid of the polls is the solution. I mean, that's that's probably the most radical, but I don't think that is the solution. And if you want me to talk more about measurements, about polling, about validity, how how these things can be done statistically, those videos would be much longer to make, way more complicated, probably pretty boring. But if it's of interest, I'd be happy to do it. I want to thank you guys as always if you do watch these videos. I've been gone for a while, as you saw my most recent video, but happy to be back. Obviously, here's another one for you guys. So hope you're all having a great September. Hope you're having a great day today. Hope you have a great day tomorrow, and I will see you in the next one.